Released in 1984, Red Dawn shows a terrifying parallel reality of what the world might look like if World War III suddenly broke out, as seen through the eyes of young teenagers who must grow up and take a stand and battle their oppressors. After a small Colorado town gets invaded by Soviets, a band of high school students must head out into the wilderness in order to survive, where they form a resistance army with both devastating and heroic consequences, with an all-star cast led by Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen. So today, get ready to yell out Wolverines as we look into 10 things you didn't know about Red Dawn, the what-if teenage action movie from the 80s. So... Let's do this. Number 10, Before the Dawn. Red Dawn was the brainchild of director and screenwriter Kevin Reynolds, who wrote the script while he was studying at USC, and MGM got wind of the script and wanted to produce a movie based on the What If World War III script. But the studio wanted some changes to be made. The original title of the movie was Ten Soldiers which apparently took more of a Lord of the Flies approach, which showed the young teenagers turning on each other. MGM wanted to make it more of a teenage Rambo movie, so the project was given to John Milius to rework the script and direct the film. Milius had a history of working on war and action movies, having written the scripts for the first two Dirty Harry movies and Apocalypse Now, as well as directing Conan the Barbarian, so the project took off from there. And original scriptwriter Kevin Reynolds would incidentally go on to direct Robin Hood and Waterworld. Number 9. Filming Locations Despite being set in Colorado, filming Red Dawn primarily took place around Las Vegas and the New Mexico desert. Before filming actually took place, the cast had to take part in an 8-week military training course to prepare themselves physically and mentally for their roles, and to know exactly how to use their prop weapons. An old rundown Safeways grocery store was discovered on location, where the store was reconstructed to house sound stages, and even some scenes from the movie were filmed there. Yeah, in Safeways. That's pretty cool they turned Safeways into an action movie. The only thing my Safeways got turned into was Woolworths. Right, Luke? Number 8, CIA Confusion. Most of the military vehicles seen in the movie were actually built and designed for Red Dawn by the movie's production, which resulted in actually creating replica Russian tanks. This also resulted in what looked like Russian army tanks roaming around the place. Yeah, during the time of the Cold War, might I add. Apparently, when the CIA found out about these tanks, they wanted to know where they came from and why they were there, and after seeing them being transported through LA, they followed the mysterious tanks back to the studio, where they no doubt would have very quickly realised they were just movie prop tanks. And then no doubt probably felt quite silly about the whole ordeal. <laughs> Number 7. Filming Woes the movie starts off with 36 paratroopers falling from the sky and attacking a high school. However, when filming this scene, the stunt didn't go too well for five of the paratrooper stuntmen, who were taken off course from the trajectory of where they were meant to land. Of which, one of them got stuck in a tree, where in a situation that could have been written for a South Park episode, the helpless stuntman had to convince the surrounding locals that he was in fact not an enemy soldier. While filming, actor Patrick Swayze suffered frostbite to his fingers. He recalled that the pain felt like having toothpicks shoved down his fingernails. But thankfully, the frostbite he suffered wasn't too severe. Heck, otherwise we would not be able to have the famous sexy pottery scene in Ghost. Charlie Sheen was terrified of his co-star William Smith, who played a Russian colonel. Sheen said that even while not filming, when Smith was on the set, he was still terrifying and not someone he felt that he could talk to, and put it down to him probably staying in character the whole time. However, despite all this and the gruelling training for the movie, actress Leah Thompson said it was the most fun she ever had working on a film. Well, at least she had a good time. Can't say the same about Patrick Swayze and his Mr. Freeze fingers. Number 6. Deleted Scenes 
One trailer for Red Dawn revealed a scene of enemy soldiers approaching a McDonald's, a scene that was actually cut from the final film. It was said that the scene was cut due to a real-life murder that took place at a McDonald's in California, which occurred several weeks before Red Dawn was set to be released. There was also going to be more of a romantic subplot between Leah Thompson's Erica character and the Lieutenant Colonel Andy character, played by Powers Booth, which was scrapped due to the character's age gap. Leah Thompson said the love affair between the characters is why she accepted the movie in the first place. But that said, I can understand why it was removed. Number 5. Red Dawn Made Movie Rating History Red Dawn was the first movie to ever be classified with the PG-13 rating, where movies could be aimed at young teens but also have a little extra violence, sex and profanity thrown into the film, but just not enough to make it an R. Despite the fact that Red Dawn was the first PG-13 film, it was actually a rating proposed by Steven Spielberg where in 1984 he found himself in hot water over the amount of violence used in Gremlins and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, two movies that were advertised as kids' films. It's here that Spielberg pitched the rating to the classification board, where on July the 1st, the new PG-13 rating was introduced, which meant that Red Dawn, which came out on August the 10th of that year, could utilise the new rating, rather than be rated R, which would have ensued the sale of more cinema tickets. Although PG-13 does seem to be neutered in modern years, and I can't help but think that if Red Dawn 1984 came out now, then it would without a doubt be given an R rating. Number 4. Movie Posters Red Dawn's movie poster was illustrated by John Alvin, who designed many memorable posters, such as Blazing Saddles, E.T., Blade Runner, The Goonies, and many more. And despite the fact that Red Dawn is heavy on the action, he takes a more subtle approach with the poster, as we literally see a beautifully illustrated Dawn with paratroopers approaching an otherwise mundane sleepy town. It's both soothing and terrifying and I really love it. Then there is this really weird German poster, and I can't put my finger on it, but the animation isn't right and maybe even looks a little too cartoony. To me it gives Red Dawn a Goonies feel. Then there is this slick stylish one that came from Italy, as we see silhouettes of the main teen standing in front of a red sky. It's not as good as the original one, but still pretty cool and effective, and remove the guns and weaponry and it can almost be an album cover. Number 3. The Bunny Casting Method the two main female leads in Red Dawn were played by Leah Thompson and Jennifer Grey, both of whom would go on to have huge successes after Red Dawn, with Thompson appearing in Back to the Future and Grey appearing in Dirty Dancing. However, the methods used to cast the female parts were somewhat interesting, as during the casting process, while talking to the potential actresses for the film, director John Milius would pitch to them a scenario. What if you were in the wilderness and were starving and saw a bunny? Could you kill it, skin it, and eat it? And those who were appalled by the idea were immediately turned down from starring in the movie. Only those who said, hell yeah, I'll eat that bunny rabbit. It is doomsday for that little bunny rabbit were considered for the roles. So if there's a lesson to be learnt here, that is keep your bunny rabbits away from Leah Thompson and Jennifer Grey. Number two, Dawn of the Box Office. Red Dawn was made on a budget of $17 million and brought in $38 million upon its release, so it doubled its budget along with making an extra $4 million. But it wasn't exactly a knockout runaway success either. It was the 20th highest grossing movie of 1984, of which was a year with a lot of competition with the likes of Ghostbusters, Beverly Hills Cop and The Karate Kid to name but just a few. Several movie critics felt like the movie glorified war and turned what could have been a realistic observation into what World War III could look like into a hollow action movie. But director John Milius maintains that Red Dawn is in fact an anti-war movie and further stated that many of the events and scenarios seen in Red Dawn actually happened during World War II. But despite all this, Red Dawn has become a cult classic with a huge adoring fan base. So before we get to number one, here are some bonus facts. Bonus number one, real life mission. When the US set up a task force to capture Saddam Hussein, the code name given to the mission was Red Dawn, named after the movie, with some of the units within the mission even being named Wolverines. Once again, a reference to Red Dawn. 
Bonus number two, Unfortunate Reunion. Red Dawn stars both Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, who three years later would play the romantic leads in the romance drama movie Dirty Dancing. However, what makes this awkward is that word has it, apparently while making Red Dawn, they really didn't get along. So we can only hope that by the time Dirty Dancing came along, they managed to patch things up. Bonus number three, Director Cameo. See that photo of Genghis Khan in the classroom? Yeah, well that poster was actually illustrated after Red Dawn's director, John Milius. Weird, huh? Number one, most violent movie ever made. Despite being granted with a PG-13 rating, Red Dawn was still considered the most violent movie made for its time. So much so it even made it to the Guinness World Records. Now I know what you're all thinking. How can Red Dawn be the most violent movie ever made when also in 1984, Freddy Krueger was running around killing teenagers with his knife glove along with the Terminator brutally murdering everyone? Why do those films get a free pass whereas Red Dawn is labelled the most violent movie ever? How does that work? Well, this is on the account that the movie contains 134 acts of violence per hour and 2.23 per minute, meaning Red Dawn doesn't hold back and delivers a punch. The claim of Red Dawn being the most violent movie was even backed up by the National Coalition of Television Violence. The movie had a kill count of 118. Once again, as mentioned before, if the movie came out today, like as in this version, not the 2012 one that everyone's already forgotten about, then there is probably no way it would not have been given an R rating. Putting the political critiquing of Red Dawn aside, especially when comparing it to the modern world, Red Dawn is an interesting and terrifying look into what might happen if war suddenly broke out. To conclude, as mentioned, Red Dawn got many criticisms when it came out, and it still does, for it being believed to be pro-violence and pro-war and pro-going out and killing people. So I've always thought that it's had this cloud hanging over it. But in all honesty, as other online critics have also suggested, I think the movie is actually very anti-war. In fact, I see it more as a cautionary tale of war and how bad and ugly things can get if we're not careful. It shows the true ugliness of conflict and violence. And okay, our heroes in the movie are not exactly having a grand old time. We see them suffer. We see them go through horrible hardships that no one would ever want to go through. It shows us that if we let global and national conflicts get out of hand, we will descend into chaos with dire consequences. And, well, the way the world is at the moment, this is probably a lesson that we could all learn from right now. Dawn is one part dumb 80s action movie and one part a more serious horrors of war story. And I can understand why some people have problems with that tonal clash. But just enjoy Red Dawn for what it is. A fictional action movie which poses interesting questions. From a movie perspective, it is entertaining. It does its job. It has plenty of action, good acting, while also asking some serious questions while going about it. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I know that everyone is expecting me to yell out WOLVERINES to end the video with, but I'm not gonna do it. See ya!